this podcast, I'd like to lay out the basics of diodes. So the diodes are our first element that is truly non-ohmic. We saw inductors and capacitors, those are non-ohmic as well, but we saw if we used complex notation, we could treat them as if they were ohmic. But diodes are not ohmic and there's no way to make them appear to be ohmic. So let's look a little bit at how you make a diode. A diode, there, there are different types of semiconductors. And there's n-types and p-types. n-types have an excess electrons and so have an excess negative charge. That's where the n comes from for n-type. P-types have excess holes or positive carriers available, and so P is for positive. And so essentially to make a diode, you take these two different types of semiconducting materials and you put them together and form a P-N junction, right, where the N and P-type are connected. And so then you have this picture right here. We have a region with excess negative carriers and a region with excess positive carriers. So if we put that in the circuit and we put in what's called the forward bias mode, and so the forward bias mode means the P side of the diode is at a higher potential than the N side of the diode, then the uh, unlike charges repel, the positive charges are repelled from the high side of the battery, and the negative charges are repelled from the negative terminal of the battery, and they're like, repelled towards the P in junction. So you have negative and positive charge carriers towards this junction, they annihilate and that allows other charges to move in from the battery from either end and the net effect is that you have current flowing through the diode. So you can switch the battery around and that's reverse bias mode that means the potential on the N side is higher than the P side. In this case you have the charge carriers moving away from the P in junction. The negative carriers of the N are attracted to the positive terminal of the battery the positive carriers and the p-type are attracted to the negative terminal of the battery and so there's a depletion there's no charge carriers in the middle there's no annihilation and so no current flows through the diode and so this is the basic characteristic we can get current we wire it up one way or we don't get current the other way so let's look at that so the symbol for a diode is essentially just a triangle with a line the arrow of this triangle points in the direction of current flowing in the forward bias direction. And so then here's what the IV curve looks like. So you can see that it's non-ohmic. The current and potential are not linearly related. And it has the following thing. If you have it in the reverse bias mode, now remember what reverse bias means. Reverse bias means point A is at a lower potential than point B. No current flows through the diode. And if you're in the forward bias mode, you get unlimited current after you apply some small potential, which typically is about 0.7 volts. If you pay some small potential price and you can pass as much current as you want through the diode. Now in actuality, that's not how they work. They're a little bit different than that. And so here's a picture of it an actual IV curve. So you can see in the forward bias mode, there actually is some voltage dependence, right, where the current is proportional to E to the potential across the diode divided by KT. So it depends on what is the potential, but essentially, for all intents and purposes, it's, it's nearly unlimited current up to a point. And it also depends on the temperature, which is what you're going to explore in lab. And then in the reverse bias mode, when we have no current, there actually is some small amount of leakage current, right? But it's, it's at the region or it's at the level of picoamps, so it's very small. And there's also some point where if you apply enough voltage in the reverse bias mode, you'll accelerate the small leakage current, you'll accelerate those electrons really fast, they'll start to collide into other electrons, and you'll have this cascading effect that you'll eventually destroy the diode. And so if you apply more than this breakdown voltage or what's called the peak inverse voltage of the diode, you'll get, you will destroy the diode. Okay, so that's the regular diode. It turns out to take advantage of the breakdown, you can also create, we also have a Zener diode. So the symbol is the same as before, only we have these lines that kind of branch off. And again, the triangle points in the direction of the forward bias current. And so here's the IV curve. 
same forward bias, same voltage temperature dependence as the regular diode. The difference comes in the reverse bias mode. There's a region that's the same. In the reverse bias, there's no current flows up until you reach some break the designed breakdown voltage called the Zener voltage, right? So this is, they're designed to do that. They're designed to break down and then you can pass as much current as you want once you've applied the Zener voltage, okay? So again, this is it's designed to do that. This typically is about five volts. And so it has some applications that we'll talk about. So these are the two types of diodes that we'll encounter. And in the next podcast, we'll see how we use these diodes.